Hi, welcome back. What we're going to do in this video and this whole playlist is we're going to look at a very, very, very important pathway. And this pathway is called the is called the pentose the pentose phosphate pathway. And this pathway is, well, to be perfectly honest, um, especially if you're taking upper level biology classes and, and even in general biology and anatomy and physiology, but this pathway is sort of the stepchild, at least in the pathways in Biochem 1. You always talk about glycolysis, the TCA cycle, beta oxidation. You even talk about amino acid oxidation to some extent. But a lot of times this pathway is left out. And I want to be perfectly clear. The pentose phosphate pathway, or some, sometimes it's called the pentose phosphate shunt, is absolutely essential to life. And that will become a little bit more apparent, a little bit more apparent whenever we actually look at um, some of the biosyntheses that we'll get to in Biochem 2. In fact, um, amino acid and nucleic acid biosyntheses all require... Um, the pentose phosphate pathway. And in fact, there are several vitamins and cofactors, and we'll, look, we'll eventually look at their biosynthesis, but several vi vitamins and cofactors like thiamine, pyrophosphate, and, uh, and, and just several others require things from the pentose phosphate pathway. And essentially what the pentose phosphate pathway is, before we really get into the, the, the details, is it's essentially a pathway that produces a lot of substrates that can be siphoned off and used in other pathways. So that will become more apparent when we get to um, the non-oxidative phase. But it, So we can divide the pentose phosphate pathway into an oxidative phase and a non-oxidative phase. So before we get into it, let's, let's recall something. Okay? We have glucose in the cell, right? And the enzyme hexokinase, so hexo kinase or to be more specific it's glucokinase right it's gonna it's going to attach a phosphate it's a nucleophilic acyl substitution it kicks off ADP right and we end up with what we end up with glucose glucose 6 phosphate right the glucose 6 phosphate can go one of two directions number one it can go towards the rest of glycolysis right it can go towards the rest of glycolysis, and the glucose 6-phosphate can be consumed by phosphoglucoisomerase, or the glucose 6-phosphate, and let me let me draw this in parentheses because I'm actually going to draw the structure of it, or it can go in the pentose phosphate pathway. So recall that glycolysis occurred in the cytosol, and so too does the pentose phosphate pathway. And so what I want to be perfectly clear is, is that the pentose phosphate pathway is running right alongside of glycolysis so they're kind of there it's kind of like a two-lane road right all going the same direction um, and it turns out that some of the products of the non-oxidative uh, phase of the pentose phosphate shunt actually get moved back into glycolysis okay so what I want to do right now is I want to just real quick review the structure of glucose 6-phosphate right so it's gonna look like this so you got your phosphate up here you got your hydroxyl group going down there, hydroxyl group going up here, going down and going down. Okay, so here's my glucose 6-phosphate, right? So here is glucose 6-phosphate. And what you're going to find, and I want to be, I, I want to make this absolutely clear, is the oxidative phase, which is, we're actually going to look at that in this video, and in a separate video we'll do the non-oxidative phase, but in the oxidative phase, there is, a, there is a very special purpose. There is a very special purpose of this phase. And the purpose of it is to produce NADPH. And we're not really going to use NADPH a whole lot in Biochem 1. But in Biochem 2 topics, that's where we use the NADPH. In fact, NADH is often used, or it's a product of catabolism, and it's used to fuel ATP synthase. The NADPH is used to fuel biosynthesis reactions. And so the, the, pen, the oxidative pentose phosphate pathway is the main source of NADPH in the body. There are certainly other sources like malic enzyme, and we in the respiratory chain we'll talk about an enzyme called nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase. But this is the main source of NADPH. Okay, so having said that, let's actually look at the reactions. And the first reaction in the pentose phosphate pathway is called glucose 6-phosphate 
glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And this, this enzyme is going to be our first source of NADPH. It's going to be our first source of NADPH. So we're going to have an NADP come in, right? And, and of course, it has a positive charge. And we're going to end up getting an NADPH. And we're going to end up generating something called phosphogluconolactone. So what I want to be clear is, is let, let's look at the, we're going to look at the, the at least the, the carbon oxygen bond that's getting dehydrogenated. And it's specifically, it's this bond, right? This is the bond that's, or the, it's the anomeric carbon that's getting dehydrogenated. So we're going to end up with something called 6-phosphogluconolactone. 6-phosphogluconolactone, and of course it's by the enzyme of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So what we end up with is something that looks like this. And whenever you see the word lactone, essentially what that means is that we're dealing with a cyclic ester, a cyclic ester. So in this case, um, the ester is a, it's part of a, 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 a pyranose ring because it's glucose, but a lactone is essentially just a cyclic ester. Okay. Now, and uh, let me write this. This is 6 Phospho, this is 6 phospho gluconolactone, and I'm going to abbreviate it for the purposes of the next enzyme. This is 6 phospho gluconolactone, right? And this molecule is going to get, is going to get consumed by 6 phospho gluconolactonase. And essentially, what this enzyme is, is it's a hydrolase. So, water is going to come in, let me draw the lone pair. Water is going to come in, and it's going to hydrolyze the lactone. So what does that mean? Well, water is going to come in as a nucleophile. It's going to attack here. The pi bond kicks up and the electrons kick back down. And this bond right here comes out and abstracts a proton. So what are we left with after 6-phosphogluconolactonase? Well, we're left with something that looks like this. So here we go. It's this. So basically, we still have the phosphate on there, right? So here's the phosphate. This is going down. This is going up, this is going down, but here, here we have a carboxylate, right? And this becomes an alcohol. So let's just make sure we still have our six carbons, right? Because we haven't lost any carbons, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what you what, what would happen is the, the at least the oxygen of this water is actually what gets connected to this carbon right here. So that's where the nucleophile hits, right? So that oxygen, we could consider maybe this oxygen right here, right? Although the oxygens would be equal because they're basically, re it's resonance stabilized. So it's just a, the electrons are equally distributed across the carboxylate, but that's beside the point. But anyways, this molecule right here is 6-phospho. This is 6-phosphogluconate. And the eight symbolizes that this is a carboxylate, right? So this is 6-phosphogluconate, right? The next enzyme in this pathway is what's going to give us our next NADPH. So what you're going to find is that this pathway, the oxidative pentose phosphate shunt, gives us two NADPH. So this is going to be the 6-phosphogluconate. is going to be consumed by 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase and of course this is going to give us this is going to give us our second NADPH second NADPH right and this is going to generate something that looks like this this is going to generate ribulose 5-phosphate this is going to generate or excuse me this is going to generate let me draw it like this this is going to generate ribulose this is going to generate ribulose 5-phosphate. So you're going to have two hydroxyl groups. And what I want to what I want to essentially say is that in this reaction, in this reaction, 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase, we end up losing a carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide we lost, and you can probably guess, is this carbon dioxide, right? Oops, let me not include that carbon. Come on. Is this carbon dioxide right here? And so what we're going to get 
is we're going to get ribulose 5-phosphate. So in, in, in 6-phosphogluconate, we had, we had in 6-phosphogluconate, close that, we had 6 carbons, right? And so if you count the carbons in here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what you're going to find is that ribose 5-phosphate and ribulose, this one's ribulose 5-phosphate, um, they're essentially, uh, they're, they're pentoses, right? And that's where, the, that is essentially where this pathway gets its name. This is the first pentose that we're generating, right? And specifically, this is a keto pentose, right? It's a keto pentose because we have this ketone right here, right? So this is ribulose 5 phosphate. So let me write that. This is ribulose, ribulose 5 phosphate, right? Well, ribulose 5-phosphate is going to get consumed by another enzyme, and it's called, and of course this is an equilibrium reaction, because you can interconvert between these, and this enzyme is called ribulose, it's called ribulose 5-phosphate isomerase. Ribulose 5-phosphate isomerase. Okay, there's another name for it, and you can basically call it phospho- you can call it phosphopentose, phosphopentose isomerase. Both of those names will work. And you could even call it ribose 5-phosphate isomerase. But essentially, you can guess what it's going to do. It's going to convert the ribulose 5-phosphate into ribose 5-phosphate, right? And if you remember, these typically these isomerases interconvert between keto sugars and aldo sugars. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. So we're going to have the hydroxyl groups going like this, right? And let's count the carbons just to make sure we got it right. Here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, and here's five. So what have we done? Well, we've essentially turned the keto sugar into the aldose form, right? The aldopentose. And this molecule right here has a special name. It's ribose. It's ribose 5-phosphate. And it turns out that ribose 5-phosphate is actually an extremely important molecule, especially in the biosynthesis of some amino acids and, um, and nucleic acids. And to illustrate that point, I want to at least show you the, the, the reaction that does that. And normally they show you this reaction when you get much deeper into biochemistry, but I at least want to show you it. And what I want to do first what I want to do first is I want to draw ribose 5-phosphate. And actually, I'm actually out of room. I will continue this in the next video. But suffice it to say for now, let, let, let's just review what we saw, right? I want to be clear. The pentose phosphate pathway, both the oxidative and non-oxidative, is occurring in the cytosol. And it's occurring right alongside glycolysis, right? So right next to glycolysis. And so we're going to generate some glucose 6-phosphate from hexokinase or glucokinase, right? And the glucose 6-phosphate can either go towards glycolysis or it can get put into the pentose phosphate shunt. So the glucose 6-phosphate gets consumed by glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, and that generates 6-phosphogluconolactone, right? And we generate our first NADPH. Then we hydrolyze the ester and generate 6-phosphogluconate, right? And then we decarboxylate and dehydrogenate it with 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase, and that gets us our second NADPH. And that gives us ribulose 5-phosphate, and then we isomerize it to ribose 5-phosphate. And the ribose 5-phosphate can actually be consumed by another enzyme. And this is, this is actually not part, of, this is not part of the pentose phosphate pathway, but it's important to note, and this is what I'm going to do in the next video, it can actually get consumed by an enzyme called phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate synthetase. And that's what's important for biosynthesis. So I will continue this in the next video. See you soon.